Hi guys and welcome to today's video where I wanted to talk about the leopard gecko gel diet from Hikari. Now a while ago, sometime last year, they actually reached out to me to let me know the diet was coming to the UK and maybe North America sometime soon and they wanted to know whether I wanted a sample, maybe if I liked it maybe I'd review it. Now I did decline and they were super nice about it, but to me gel diets, ones that are advertised as a food replacement, especially for geckos like leopard geckos, is just a no-no. There are some diets out there that can be included as part of a diet, such as, you know, Insectigold by Arcadia, or sometimes people would use diets like Rapashi's Grub Pie if their geckos are sick or need to gain weight whilst they're recovering. However, one big problem we face when providing a gel diet like this as 100% of the gecko's meals is we eliminate one of the biggest forms of enrichment. One thing that not only physically stimulates them but also mentally. Hunting down live feeder insects that are gut loaded and dusted. If you think your gecko is bored, it definitely will be if it lives on two to four centimeters of gel every two to three days. To be quite blunt, I feel that if you choose to feed your gecko this gel as a main diet over live feed insects, because insects are icky or um, I don't like to look after them, that's on you. That's suiting your lifestyle and not the leopard geckos. That's not benefiting the leopard gecko in a way and you shouldn't probably have a leopard gecko. It's like having a cat or a dog but taking away all their toys, all their forms of enrichment because it suits you, not because it benefits the animal. So hopefully you'll see in this video why this gel is not exactly what it seems. Now my issue wasn't just with enrichment. I actually read that your lizard's waste now will not easily stick to the tank or vivarium surfaces, thereby reducing ongoing enclosure maintenance. So, does this mean the poop comes out differently? Like, if you started eating something that turned your poop blue, or like perfectly formed cubes like a wombat, wouldn't you be concerned with what it's doing to your body that makes this perfectly natural byproduct change? So, once I read that this is a poop changing gel, I was even more curious and I had to look at what is actually in this diet. I looked at the contents and I've highlighted all the parts that I want to look into a little deeper and explain why they're a problem. Oh, and by the way, this is apparently suitable for a range of reptiles, including fruit-eating reptiles, even though the diet doesn't actually include any fruit. Also, and I'm going to butcher this name probably, but Tachydromus are not geckos. <laughs> They're commonly known as grass lizards, so it's kind of worrying that it's advertising for technically a reptile that doesn't exist. Tachydromus geckos aren't a thing. Anyway, the first thing we'll look at is composition. So it's organised from most to least. Now, mealworms are often included in diets because though dried mealworms contain next to nothing when it comes to nutrition, some people consider them a source of fibre due to them mainly being chitin. Now, my main issue with this is it's like the main ingredient in this. And this actual diet also contains crushed silkworms, which would have been a better ingredient to choose from. A lot of diets when you look nowadays actually contain black soldier fly larvae, aka calci worms, which once again would have been a much better insect to use. The next issue is bran. <laughs> This is quite a big issue, especially since it's the second highest quantity in the overall diet. Now, bran is more of a filler or bulking agent. It's cheap, it's not healthy, it's also full of phytic acid, which prohibits the absorption of calcium, which of course we know is pretty essential for our geckos. Next is soybean meal, uh, not necessarily bad, just another filler agent. Then we have brewer's dried yeast. So this is basically here to be a uh, vitamin B complex. Now you may not know this, but there's actually an internationally agreed quantity of vitamin B complex allowed to be added to foods. And this amount is actually quite low, which indicates that the ingredients before this must have been in bulk. And all the ingredients after this must be minute. 
Now, as we go further down this list, we actually find there's more vitamin D3 in this. Then there is calcium, which is a big no-no. And then moving on to additives, we see that they're using E numbers. Um, and from what I've read, this is only really using equine food. So I'm not sure why it's being used here. Uh, but it shows that they're using retinal acetate and uh, not preformed retinal. It's also 75% less than what's actually usually advised to be used with reptiles, so that's quite concerning. The vitamin D in this is extremely low too. Now, if you have a vitamin powder nearby, check the dosage, okay? Because this is 1300. Arcadia's new supplement, so you revitalize D3, that is purposely slightly lower in D3, so you can still technically use it alongside lower percentage UV systems, is still using 5000, okay? And that's meant to be low. So this is extremely low, and if you're only using this gel, you didn't add any D3 supplements, you didn't have a UV system, your gecko will have some major health problems. On the flip side, we have vitamin E, and the dosage is actually quite high. Now, vitamin E is a fat-soluble vitamin, so you definitely don't want too much of this because it gets stored in the body. Now, this is around 1,300 international units per kilogram. If you look at Exoterra supplements, they contain 20.5. If we look at Arcadia's Revitalized D3, that has 150. There's quite a bit of difference, but 1,300? This gel has far too much vitamin E in it. This gel also includes vitamin C, which we actually don't need to add into our reptiles' diets because they produce it themselves. And by the way, I did actually do a video going through every single vitamin and mineral, their uses, what they do in the body, what happens if you have an undersupply or oversupply, and I think it's really important to understand what we're putting in our geckos' bodies, and I'd really appreciate it if you could uh, check that out sometime. But vitamin C is one of those that will pass through the body if there's too much, and can be beneficial if a gecko is sick and needs that little top up, but it is just unusual to include that in the diet, really. Anyway, moving on to the next part. So leopard geckos, like a lot of reptiles, are technically classed as opportunistic omnivores, but we know that they mainly eat a lot of insects in uh, captivity. So why on earth is a gel that is made for them so low in protein? Now, most studies will tell you that reptiles like this, if you're making a diet for them, they need to have at least 25 to 35% protein. So, 10% <laughs> is really low. Also, considering this diet contains so much chitin and bran, it's quite shocking that the fibre is only 2.5%. Another big problem is the gel is only 8% moisture. When when you're making a gel like this, originally it should be around 25 to 30% water if you want to properly form it. So either everything we've just read through is just a base mix of nutrients, which means once they're added to the gel, they're completely like watered down, or everything we've read through is incredibly ambiguous. It, you know, something is just not quite right here. So to sum things up, based on what we've read, this contains a lot of bran which prohibits the absorption of calcium. The calcium in this gel is extremely low and so is the vitamin D and A. However, there is for some reason too much vitamin E. The protein and fibre percentages are very low and the moisture level is questionable. Overall, would I recommend this gel? Not really, no. <laughs> Definitely not in the long run. If you use this as stated every two to three days for an adult, not only will they suffer over time due to the imbalance of vitamins in this diet, but honestly, I can't imagine them gaining or retaining much weight. I think maybe if you had a gecko that for some reason couldn't eat or hunt naturally because it's recovering from an illness, the added vitamin C in this may help, uh, but it's only really recommended that you use this for a short period. Like if you're in a tricky situation where for some reason you can't get hold of food for a little bit, like I remember at the start of lockdown loads of people were freaking out because they couldn't get hold of feeder insects, then yes, use this, it's better than seeing your gecko starve, but don't use this as a main diet for a long time. I hope this video has cleared things up. Honestly, the guy who reached out to me was really nice and I really don't like hating on one particular product, but my loyalties do lie with you guys and your geckos and I feel I'd be doing a disservice if I didn't warn you about this. I've heard Hikari do some good aquatic diets, but maybe a little more research needs to be done when uh, delving into the reptile hobby. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's been helpful. If you haven't already, please subscribe. But thank you for watching, guys, and goodbye.